Hi, everybody. Okay, so, oh, and then stuff over here. Okay, so I'm really excited about what we're about to do. Um, it's something I've never done before. I've always wanted to do. Um, I'm going to get rid of these bubbles real quick. Okay, so what we are going to do is hammer painting. So we are literally going to put um, paint on the canvas and we're going to hit it with a mallet and see what happens. I have covered my entire work area in plastic. My computer screens are covered. My speakers are covered. My tripod is covered. So what we're going to do is I've actually only seen one video on this before. We're going to do it completely different than that lady did. This was a sacrificial canvas, one that I had done. I didn't like, figured that um, I would use it for this. If it doesn't work, it was going in the fire pit anyways. Um, it has been coated with um, white. It is. It was a mixture of PVA glue. So about 70% about of PVA glue. Um, the rest of it's Floetrol. And then of course the pigment and some distilled water. The colors that we are going to use for this experiment are Victorian blue, zinc metallic, honey brown, ultramarine blue, bright copper, and royal ruby. Um, why did I choose those colors? I chose those colors because I walked over to my paint wall and I just grabbed some. I just grabbed six and this is what we ended up with. So there was no rhyme or reason about which colors I grabbed. I just grabbed some colors. Again, experiment using colors I normally don't use. I like the brighter blues and stuff like that. We were going with a more muted blue. Of course, we always have the bright blue in there. Um, we don't have any white, or not any white, we don't have any red. Um, we're using a tan, which I don't use very much. And then, of course, the zinc, I didn't even know I had that color. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to do them one at a time. So we are going to do a flip cup and then a hammer, and then a flip cup and a hammer, and then a flip cup and a hammer. So that way we can kind of see where we need them. So... Let's do the first one and let's see what happens. Um, there is alcohol in these paints. Oops, I guess that's where the first flip cup is going. Um, I put alcohol in all of the paints. And I didn't really measure, I just kind of dropped it in there. All right. Whoop, well, I guess that beat us to it. Okay, fun part. The only person that's not covered is me. Oh well, I do the laundry anyways. Pick it up and I think I hit it a little too hard, but that's okay. All right, try this again. A little less paint this time. Let's do this one. And this one. And this one. And we're going to go right here with it. And lift up and smack. Okay. Now, once we get done with all this, we are going to tilt it around and kind of move it. I think we're going to have a lot of paint left over, though. I might have overestimated the amount of paint needed. I don't think we've done tan yet. Let's do tan. And let's do this one and this one. Okay, we're gonna put you right here. And then lift up and stack. Okay, probably need to clean off my mallet between this one. Okay, I got my rag. <coughs> All right, now let's do. Um, you know what? We're just going to say forget the flip cups and we're just going to pour it onto the canvas. So we're going to do this here, here, 
Again, literally shooting from the hip and going with whatever we get. Works. Now let's do Ooh, we have a lot of that already and that. Can never have too much blue though. Okay, Let's see what happens. Sorry, I didn't turn on my ambience today. <clears throat> there we go. We have a lot of paint left over. So that was my hammer paint experience or experiment. Um, I probably have another sacrificial camp canvas laying around here somewhere. Is there something else I've always wanted to try? And since we are already playing experiment today, we can go ahead and give it a shot. Let me hit this with the heat gun. interesting. Um, not everybody's cup of tea. Probably not my cup of tea. Um, but somebody might find it pretty. And um, so yeah. I'm trying to think if I should move it around some more though. This right here is so pretty. I kind of want to hit it with a mallet again, but I'm not going to. Am I? Yes, no, maybe so. Nah. I don't think anything good can come out of me hitting it with a mallet again. I'm going to get you down and show you this area right here. It's so cool looking. It'll be a beautiful um, macro shot. Even if nothing else, this never sells, never goes anywhere. Just having this little piece right here as a macro shot, completely worth it. Let me get you down to show you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this little area right here. I love how those little veins are coming out 
just that piece right there. There's some other cool stuff going on in here. This might be just a good piece for just macro shots for um, selling prints, you know, if anything else. This has a lot of different stuff in it that um, singled out and blown up can be very beautiful, especially that area right there. Okay, I'm going to put y'all on pause while I get this canvas out of the way and onto the drying rack and grab something else to have another experiment. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So one thing I wanted to do before I put the canvas on here is all of this runoff is perfect for, for making blanks. So blanks are for if you do jewelry with um, your runoff. I use photo paper and um, basically I just take the photo paper, I put it face down in the paint and I pick it up and let it dry and then you can cut it out and you can put it in jewelry, resin it in however you want to do it. So this is actually the perfect color combinations for that. So I just lay them in the paint. Okay, now once I do that, let me move my mallet out of the way that we're done with it. I'm gonna kind of press that in a little bit and then pick it up. You see you have all kinds of different detail in there. put it on the drying rack. Each one is going to give you something completely different. One of the things I like about doing this is, you know, you can get one of those long pendants and see this area right here. You could cut that part out and it could literally be that little piece going straight down the middle of a long pendant. Something that's extremely unique. You can do it in so many different color variations. The possibilities are really endless when you're doing this kind of stuff. doesn't really have much on it. Let's try it again. There we go. That gives us more options. We got one more, one more to go. Oh, that's pretty. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. So now I've got my canvas here. It's definitely a sacrificial canvas. Um, I can't even remember what it was, but I've had it on the drying rack, so it's kind of got some stuff on it. off chance that this experiment actually works, uh, this canvas will definitely have to be framed because the, the edges are just terrible. Okay, so two things we're gonna test. We are gonna test how much alcohol is too much, and I don't mean for drinking. I mean for putting in paint. At what point in time do you lose cells and you break down your pigments? So that's going to be the first test. So we're going to go ahead and put alcohol in all of our paints. And so I use this little squeeze dropper. I'm sorry you guys never get to see me use it. Um, I fill it up and just kind of do a few drops or something in each one. But what we're going to do today is we're going to fill it up. And I'm going to do a milliliter. Get my computer screens to come back on. I am going to do a milliliter in each cup. So we're going to see what happens. Normally, I just do a few drops, a few, three, four drops. But we are going to really load it up with alcohol and see what happens. Okay, so that's going to be test one. alcohol in. Okay. And as you can't tell, I've been painting a lot today. It's all the way up my elbow, all over my hands. Yeah, pretty much stained. Okay, so the second test is going to be another two tests. So that was one, so technically it's going to be three today. So how much alcohol is too much? Um, how high so we're going to do a dirty pour um, into the cups, and then we're going to see from how high we can drop it onto the canvas. And then I'm going to do a dirty cup pour, and I'm literally going to slam it across the canvas. We're going to see what happens. Things I've always wanted to do, but I didn't want to waste the paint and the canvas, and now I have sacrificial canvases, and I have extra paint. So we're going to do it. So... The first couple, so the first one is going to be Again, everything is still covered, so I'm going to grab my chair to stand on. Okay, I've got my chair. <clears throat> now, let's see. We are going to come all the way up here, and I am probably holding this about a foot above the camera, and we are going to pour. That makes a mess. Okay, experiment one done. Now let's shift everything around a little bit. This is awesome, this is muddy. Okay, experiment two, what do we have over here? 
Oh, I think that's that cup that had white in it. We're going to use that cup. Choose the rest of the paint. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Now it's all mixed up. We're just going to slam it across the, there. Well, it kind of worked. Well, there you go. Two experiments. Kind of worked. Um, not massive, massive successes, not, I can't go, ooh, and ah, oh, these are beautiful, these are amazing, because they're not, they're, they're okay paintings, um, but I will say they're not bad for being experiments on sacrificial canvases. Um, so what did we learn? Pouring from a really high level in a dirty cup. The brighter the colors, the better. Um, when you get into the browns, it gets really muddy. Same thing for the pour across. Um, brighter colors is better. Um, whites actually really work out well. Um, again, when you get into the darker colors, it gets really muddy. Uh, the how much alcohol is too much alcohol. Apparently, we haven't figured that part out yet because there are some beautiful cells going on here. And the lacing right here is also gorgeous. So, um, that one we can still keep working on, on how much alcohol is too much. So, hi, Kiba. Can I help you, Bubby? So, Kiba, our big guy just came in. If you want to see him, let me get you down. Okay. This is Kiba. Say hi, Kiba. This is our Akbash. He probably wants me to come and go to bed. Okay, almost there, Bubba. Okay, so I was going to let you see this anyways. So like I said, it's not gorgeous. It's not beautiful. It's not the best painting you've ever seen. You'll, But um, it does have some pretty lacing going on. And it does have some pretty cells.
And again, I could probably get some good macro shots out of this. So if anything, I can use it for that. Especially this part right here. That itself would be a pretty picture, just like that. So that's it. Um, I am out of Floetrol and I am out of PVA glue. So this is literally my last painting until I can go to the store. So if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit that like button. And um, if you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe and leave me any comments, anything you'd like to see or if you like what you see. All right. And as always, have a blessed day.